Hi, my name is Malte Rieten and I am a urologist at the Alta Uro Urology Center in Basel. In the next 15 minutes, I'd like to provide you valuable information on the topics prostate, prostate cancer and prostate cancer prevention. I will cover various topics. These include the anatomy and function of the prostate, the frequency of prostate cancer, the risk factors for prostate cancer, the complaints that prostate cancer can cause, the topic of prevention and early detection of prostate cancer, and the diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer. The prostate is a male organ which has about the size of a walnut. It belongs to the internal sex organs and is located directly below the bladder. The urine flows from the bladder through a narrow channel through the prostate into the urethra. The prostate is located next to the rectum. The main function of the prostate is to produce part of the fluid which transports the sperms. This fluid is important for the mobility and function of the sperms. During ejaculation, the muscles of the prostate contract and press the fluid through small ducts into the urethra. At the same time, the fluids produced by the so-called seminal vesicles and the sperms originating from the testicles are excreted into the urethra. The function of the prostate is, among others, controlled by the hormone testosterone, the male sex hormone. Prostate cancer is the most frequently diagnosed cancer in men. In Switzerland, about 7,400 men are diagnosed with prostate cancer each year. Below the age of 50, prostate cancer is rare. Most new cases occur in men from the age of 70. The probability of still being alive five years after the diagnosis is 89%, which is among the second highest of all cancers. The causes of prostate cancer remain largely unknown. However, certain risk factors increase the risk of prostate cancer. The most important risk factors are age and family history. Age is the most important risk factor for prostate cancer. While the risk of developing prostate cancer within the next 10 years is less than 0.1% for a 35-year-old, the risk of a 75-year-old increases to about 5%. Men who have prostate cancer cases in their close family have an increased risk of developing prostate cancer themselves. If the father is affected, the risk doubles with a brother with prostate cancer, it is up to three times as high as in the general male population. The more family members are affected and the younger they were at the time of diagnosis, the higher the risk for prostate cancer. Other known risk factors are smoking, alcohol consumption and physical inactivity. There are no typical early symptoms or warning signs of prostate cancer. In prostate cancer, usually symptoms only are present when the disease is advanced. This means, for example, that the cancer spread to the urethra or the bladder or that metastases have already formed outside the prostate. In prostate cancer, this mainly occurs in the bone. Possible symptoms of advanced disease can be an increased urinary urgency, inability to urinate or a weak stream. Further signs can be blood in the urine or the seminal fluids. Even if these symptoms are almost always not related to prostate cancer, a urology consult should be made. Furthermore, check with your doctor if you have new severe bone pain, for example in your lower back your pelvis or the hips. Some factors that increase the risk of cancer can be influenced by ourselves. Overweight is associated with a higher risk of prostate cancer. A healthy diet 
and regular exercise can help to control weight. Furthermore, sports and other physical activities can reduce the risk of cancer. Men who are not physically active in their jobs should engage in moderate to vigorous physical activity for 45 to 60 minutes on four to five days a week. This means at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week. A balanced diet with lots of fruits and vegetables can help. In contrast, according to current scientific evidence, dietary supplements do not prevent from prostate cancer. Smoking and excessive alcohol consumption, on the other hand, increase the risk of cancer. Enjoy! If detected early, the chances of cure are higher for prostate cancer as well. However, even among experts, there currently is no uniform agreement on whether and which measures to use for early detection. The benefit of early detection, that death from prostate cancer are prevented, must carefully be weighted against the disadvantage of a possible overdiagnosis or overtreatment. With rectal examination of the prostate, only superficially located and larger tumors can be found. This means that tumors that are small remain undetected. Therefore, the benefit of this exam is very limited and it is not considered suitable as the sole test for early detection. An essential part of prostate cancer screening is the so-called PSA test, which is a blood test. PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen. It is a protein which stems from the prostate and it is responsible for liquefying the seminal fluid. The higher the value, the more likely a tumor is present. Very high values indicate an advanced disease and the presence of metastasis. A disadvantage of the PSA test is that there is no exact upper limit value and an increase in PSA can also be caused by other causes, such as a benign prostate enlargement or an inflammation of the prostate. The potential benefit of a PSA-based prostate cancer screening has been investigated in numerous large studies. In a large European study with more than 150,000 participants, a reduction in deaths from prostate cancer was shown. However, the benefit of prostate cancer screening is associated with an increased number of diagnoses. Thus, prostate cancer screening also diagnoses men in whom the disease may never have caused problems. The current urological guidelines therefore recommend informing men in detail about the advantages and disadvantages of prostate cancer screening. If desired, a PSA-based early detection should be carried out from the age of 45 in men with a life expectancy of 10 years or more at regular intervals. If the PSA is elevated or if a suspicious hardening of the prostate is detected during rectal examination, further investigation is necessary. In recent years, magnetic resonance imaging of the prostate has gained an important role. This imaging can accurately identify areas in the prostate that are suspicious for cancer. If this examination suggests cancer, a biopsy of the prostate is necessary. The prostate biopsy can be performed either through the rectum or through the perineum. Due to the lower risk of infection, the biopsy through the perineum is preferred. Depending on the procedure used, the prostate biopsy can be performed under local anesthesia or a short general anesthesia. The prostate biopsy is usually performed as a so-called fusion biopsy. This means that the MRI data set is analyzed for the biopsy and then, under ultrasound control, samples can be taken from suspicious areas. The samples taken are sent to pathology for histological examination. If cancer cells are found in the tissue taken, further examinations may follow to more precisely determine 
the location and spread of the tumor. The treatment depends on whether the tumor is confined to the prostate at the time of the diagnosis or has already advanced in surrounding tissue or spread into lymph nodes or other organs. Tumors that are confined to the prostate are treated with the aim of cure. If it is a non-aggressive prostate cancer, no immediate therapy is necessary. A regular follow-up, a so-called active surveillance, is carried out. Only when the cancer becomes more aggressive during follow-up, a switch to active treatment is required. Another possible option for non-aggressive tumors is that only the area of the prostate affected by the cancer is treated. This therapy is called focal therapy. However, there currently is a lack of evidence of equivalence with the so-called standard therapies. The standard therapy for cancer confined to the prostate is either surgical removal of the prostate or radiation therapy. Both therapies show comparable results in terms of cure. However, since surgery and radiology differ in terms of side effects, detailed counseling is important so that one can make the right decision regarding treatment. If the tumor has already spread to adjacent tissue or metastasis have formed in local lymph nodes, surgery or radiation as a single therapy no longer is sufficient. In such a case, additional forms of systemic treatment are necessary, a so-called hormone deprivating therapy. This therapy also is carried out with the aim of cure. If there are already metastases in other organs, a cure can no longer be achieved. The treatment then has a palliative character. The aim is to bring the tumor spread to a standstill and to maintain the patient's quality of life. This is done with a hormone deprivation therapy as well as other medications which are regulating the hormonal balance. In recent years, tremendous advances have been made in that field, leading to long-lasting survival and a high quality of life. At the end of my talk, I'd like to summarize the most important facts. Prostate cancer is a common cancer. Mostly men over 70 years of age are affected by the disease, but younger men also can develop prostate cancer. It is important to know that most men who develop prostate cancer in advanced age do not die from this disease, but live with it. Men who wish to have a screening for prostate cancer should be informed about the advantages and disadvantages. For screening, a blood test the PSA test is recommended. If prostate cancer is detected, there is no reason to be desperate. Prostate cancer is a very diverse disease. There are tumors that do not require immediate treatment and can instead be actively monitored. For tumors that require treatment, there are modern and well-tolerated treatment options. With this talk, would like to provide you information about prostate cancer and motivate you to learn more about this topic. Talking to your doctor can help to reduce anxiety and make the best possible decision. We believe that well-informed men can make the right decision. We sincerely hope that this lecture has helped to inform you and to provide you security in dealing with this topic.